Praise the Lord, everyone. Let's just stand this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before thy throne of grace. Lord God, you are thy great physician and healer. But now this time, Lord, as we look into your word, I just pray, use this mind as you would see fit. We're asking now in your precious name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. If you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to be into three chapters. No, I'm not going to read three chapters, because I know you've read them before. But I'll be into Revelation chapter 13, and then chapter 12, and the Daniel chapter 7. We'll start at the 13th chapter. This is a bit loud, echoing a little bit in the room there. Just put it down a hair. Yeah. There. I don't like to hear myself talk, so. I know, it's, I know you have to suffer through it, but, but I don't think. All right, I'll read the first scripture in the chapter 13. We're going to be looking at that fourth beast that Daniel saw that John saw. But I want to be looking at it, bringing it to its climax, where it comes into its fo- a focal point at the week of Daniel, when the week of Daniel begins. And we'll just read the first verse here. It says in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, verse 1, And I stood on the sands of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads ten horns and upon his horn ten crowns and upon his head the name of blasphemy time wise John yes when he's receiving the vision he's in 96 AD But when he's looking at this particular picture, we're going to see that really he's looking at it to a specific point in time that it's going to lead to climax. It's like any beast that rises or empire. Now, when we say beast, it means an empire. An empire doesn't start... start One week it's not, and the next week it is. Usually it's a gradual process leading up to its height of its glory of whatever it is. And I had a phone call concerning the beast and the image of the beast. When we say the beast, it is an overall encompassing word that the Bible looks at it, it depends how you read it in, in what chapter, it is a territory. It is physical, has boundaries and limits. The fourth beast, the head of it, is in Europe. We know that. But that beast, the reason that the scripture doesn't use the Roman Empire and uses the beast, it's looking at the nature of it. And there's sometimes, when we're looking at this, there's two natures that you have to deal with. One is the economic and political side of things. And an actual physical territory that you can actually see on a map and recognize it. But then when we also talk about the beast, the scripture 
usually refers to the attitude or characteristic of that animal nature that's in or that nature that's in that empire. And on top of that, you have the spirit of Satan that influences it. So all that combined, the spirit of Satan with the characteristics and the actual territory is the whole beast, if you want to, in that picture of a stance. Now, when we read verse 2 here, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as is the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his authority, his power, his seat, and great authority. Now, you see, the dragon is involved with this fourth beast. It's the spirit that overrides the characteristics of that empire. How many can follow? So, when we get into certain descriptions, we'll be looking at the characteristic of the beast or the spirit that motivates the beast. But if we're talking about ge geography, we're looking at a specific area of place. Now, I want you to note here, when John seen this, verse 1 to verse 2, it talks about the beast rising out of the sea. Right? John is in 96 AD now. Well, I have to put it up, I guess. So John is not in the days of Daniel, but he's in 96 AD. We know through history and through the Bible, the Roman Empire fell in about 490 BC, uh, AD. And the head that was wounded unto death around the 1500s by Martin Luther was the spiritual sword. And Napoleon did the actual physical wounding of that authority of that papal head, which was a little later on. So it was, these things are not done overnight. These things are gradually moving up. Now, when John sees this beast, remember, when it had its, war, its mortal head was wounded, that beast fell under the timeline. There was no more such a thing as a Roman Empire as you knew it in the days of Caesar. So though, therefore, the beast seems to have disappeared. So when John sees it, he's not seeing it rise when Daniel saw it. Because Daniel saw its day of rising. Yes, Daniel was in 553 B.C., but that Roman beast started to rise around 62 B.C. How many followings? Am I going too fast or is this understandable so far? Now, the reason I'm going at it like this we're getting near a time that we have to look at the scripture a little bit more closely to our time frame that we are living in. So now John, he's in 96 AD. He sees a beast rising out of the water. He's not seeing it there. He's seeing it over here. Maybe I'll use another chart to, to express this. John is seeing it rise in a future tense in 1945. Because the beast that he's going to describe is not just the lion with the dreadful teeth. Because when Daniel seen it, there was no body of a leopard, nor feet of a bear, of those which are attributes of the other empires. But when John sees it, he says, first, it's rising out of the sea. It started after World War II. This, been, this rising of this beast is a gradual affair. It is through the economics and the buildup of the American government after World War II 
to build up the European nation. So he's building it, giving it strength in the countries that they're in. But these things take time for them to grab hold and their economies to prosper where they can start to function on their own. Then after a while, they come to the idea, we must come together. If we're ever going to survive, we've got to stop fighting each other. So then when you come to the, to the 60s, that European common market started being formed, right? So now it's forming that beast that John, the reason that John saw it rising out of the sea, it's rising out of the Mediterranean Sea. Yes, that's the geographical area. But he's seen it rise up from 1945. That's the political side as it's being, let's say, worked over so these countries can function and come together. As time per keeps progressing, more of that head of that beast is being the political side and the territory side is getting to be a little bit bigger now. But even though that Europe has come together, it is not to the place you see it in verse 2. It does not possess the feet of a bear yet. It does not have the body of a leopard yet. The bear and the leopard is your Media Persian and your Babylonian Empire. The, the European community does not extend its, uh, from to adjoining countries of those areas in the Middle East is not adjoined to the head of Europe yet, isn't it? So if we're looking at that scripture in its proper light, when John sees it in verse 2, he's looking at it when that body has the feet of a bear and the body of a leopard. And it has the ten horns and the seven heads. It shows, identifies it. Now, polit now territory and political and economic wise, that beast is going to grow and grow and grow Till it reaches the week of Daniel to begin. We're headed for a Mount Carmel showdown. The world is. Because Ezekiel 38 and 39. When the smoke settles. Yes, God will deal with that army that will come against Israel. But he's going to call. Excuse me. He's going to call a sword. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> He's going to call for a sword or fire to, roll, to rain on Gog and Magog and those other nations. At that time, it will have completely dealt with the religions of the world. You will not have no more, no Muslim belief. So therefore, the body that is the leopard and the body part that is the bear. Now, these two are now made compatible to join to that head. Then when, then they're signing that covenant with those nations that are the bear and the leopard. Then at that week when it begins, you have verse 2 in its full scriptural position. It has climax to what it is going to be. Not the work that it's going to do, but what it is. Because we couldn't say, well, that's... That's the beast right there in 1963 or 1945 on the geopolitical side of things. It is not there yet. But it's, it's still in the making. All right. Now we're going to look at the ecclesiastical side of it. The dragon. Who is it? It is Satan. They were singing about the lions. Satan goes about as a roaring lion to seek who he can devour and to destroy. Not only to the individual, but into the system. Now let's turn to Revelation chapter 12. Now, in the 12th chapter, from verse 1 to verse 4, or verse up to verse 3, we're going to read. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon 
under her feet. That is the nation of Israel in her completed time frame. But before she gets there, she's not appearing as that picture yet. And upon her head was the crowns of twelve stars, which are the twelve patriarchs of the nation of Israel. And she being with child, travailing pain, and to be delivered. Now it goes on to say in verse 3, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Now watch. Why is that dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head? That's to identify that dragon. Because the descriptive of the heads and the horns relates it and ties it to the Roman Empire. That's what that does. Now watch. Also, that red dragon is not a crawling, fire-breathing dragon that's walking on the ground. He's in heaven. It's in the spirit realm. Though this shows to me that that dragon, which is Satan, that spirit, is influenced and into that Roman beast. Because it was used to influence Herod to kill the little children from two, two years and under when Jesus was born. Yes, the beast, you can say, well, it's Rome. Yes, it is. But in it, if you want to incorporate the whole picture, here's a spirit in the spirit realm that influences men that is political and territorial wise to do something. And the reason that it shows the heads and the horns is so that you and I can unmistakably realize it is Satan in that empire. All right. Well, praise the Lord. So far, so good. Now, when we go back to the 13th chapter... Oh, maybe I'll leave that one up. Now, in verse 3, let's read it carefully. And I saw one of his head, as it were, that's a past tense word. You are not in the day that the head got wounded. That's in the past now, as John has seen this. Because remember, John saw in verse 2, that beast had already the feet of a bear and the body of a leopard. Now he goes on describing, he's saying, And I saw one of the head were, perhaps past tense, wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Now, political beasts after World War II started getting built up to start to rise. Also in that period of time, you have the World Council of Churches was formed in 1948. down in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, not in America. So the World Council of Churches was formed in Europe, where's the first meeting where they got together. We say us churches has to come together. All right. So now the, it says that, that wounded head was healed. Now, the head, when you're talking about that head that was wounded, yes, it's attached to the beast, but you are looking at it in the term 
of an ecclesiastical head. Remember, it's a woman that was riding the beast. But it's that ecclesiastical head that was wounded. And the wound was on a spiritual nature that God used the, his sword with Martin Luther to strike it. Now to heal it. First of all, let's look at it before it was wounded. It had control all over Christendom in that Roman, uh, Holy Roman Empire. It had control over all the souls that was in, in it. It said, if you didn't belong to the Catholic Church, you were on your way to hell. I'm glad God raised up a man like Martin Luther, that just shall live by faith. It's not where you belong to a church. It's knowing that God can save you, and he gives you a revelation of what truth is. So now, that head, we're looking at, at the ecclesiastical head being healed altogether. We've been seen since 1948. Yes, the Protestants has got together. They had more meetings down through the years. They added to their numbers. Till worldwide, there are over 343 denominations that belongs to it. The Catholic Church is not part of it. It's only an observer. It is not part of it. Because if it was part of it, then the Catholic Church would be also the World Council of Churches, wouldn't it? That's scriptural. So the papal head cannot belong to the World Council of Churches, but the World Council of Churches will join in with that papal head when the time comes. Here's some facts. You can go right on the World Council of Churches' own site. In these last 10 years, after year 2000, 81% of the contribution to the World Council of Churches came from Europe, not America. 16.8% came from North America. And the main contributing country was Germany with 34%, Sweden 17%, the U.S. 13%, and the Netherlands 10 So when we're looking at it, it's reality. Yes, in the United States, Brother Branham said, the World Council of Churches was those Protestant denominations in the U.S., and it is even now. But there's coming a day where the World Council of Churches in the United States will not be part of that World Council of Churches. Because what, we're going to go into this a little bit. Now, for that head to be healed, in other words, for that ecclesiastical head to have authority. If the Catholic Church is just an observer in the World Council of Churches, it's not exercising its authority over it. And now there's the World Council of Churches being directed by Rome. But we know... They are fastly moving, and they've been moving over time, especially in 1962, which is about the same time the seals were being brought. The Catholic Church had a Vatican Council in which David Duplessis, a tongue-talking Pentecostal minister, introduced tongues to the Catholic Church, to the Pope. It was already happening in their ranks even before he got there. But now the Catholic Church had made open the door for the Protestant daughters to come home. They have not come home yet, but they're in the process of coming home. Now, when that week begins, or at the time of that week, that Catholic Church will be in prime, yes, to ride over the European beasts, and the body of the beast, 
by signing those covenant and agreements. And it will be at that time when the World Council of Churches will give, will get authority from Rome and sanction it in Europe. Then the head will be completely healed at that point in time. Because right now from 63, that, he, that head is continually being healed. As the political side, it will be completely assembled when the week begins on the political side. Those territories that are the Middle East countries. So all at once, at one point in time. That's why God is bringing this showdown. So you'll have that ecclesiastical Rome. It will give authority. Watch the scripture in one place. He gave authority to the image. It's not the image grab. I've got authority. But RCC gives authority to WCC. How many of you know what RCC is? Roman Catholic Church. Now, I'm not speaking against the people, but it's that system that the Scripture describes here. So in verse 3, And I saw one of the beasts as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, to me, heal doesn't mean because they got a pope in Rome. It's because now he's got that supreme authority again, like he had it in the Middle Ages. Oh, praise the Lord. Are you following so far? Oh, well, that's good. All right, we're going to go on. I hope this doesn't bore you going in these things. All right, we're going to go to work, verse 4. And they, that's pointing to certain people, worship the dragon. which gave power unto the beast. Now, this dragon is giving power to the beast. How is that all unfolding? We have in Revelation chapter 13, from verse 11 on down, a lamb beast. When America was discovered and the forefathers came, yes, it was a lamb. It might have two little sprinkling little horns, but it wasn't speaking as, a, as with authority or as a dragon. Not at that point in time. So it took time for it as a nation to build up the economy to grow, people populate it, till it rose to a place where now it would have authority. Because what has taken place when that papal head was wounded by Martin Luther with the Word of God and Napoleon put the Pope in jail, then that dragon leaves the Roman Empire and tries now to get influence into this lamb beast. That Satan didn't disappear because the Roman Empire disappeared. Are we following so far? Satan still exists. The only thing that will destroy him is the lake of fire. So when, when the, the Holy Roman Empire collapsed, if you want to, to its authority that it had because of its head being wounded. Now Satan moves and comes into this lamb beast to influence it, it. And we are in at verse 4. And they worship the dragon. Now in verse 4, those that worship the dragon, which give power to the beast, that's over here. It has not brought you the information how it got there, but when you're talking about worshiping the beast, and the beast has power and authority, 
when does the beast have authority? It's when that stinking week is signed. Because right now, Rome has no authority. Europe, yes, the head of it is together. But you can't call that the beast. That's the head of the beast that John saw. Now, as that head will one day, when that week begins, then it will have authority. And at that time, they will wonder after that beast or that empire or that system. They'll say, thank God there's something that's to bring peace into the world. Because what is that anchor Christ going to do? He's going to be bringing peace, he says. He's going to be a man of peace. That'll be a short duration, though. All right. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. When is he speaking those blasphemy? In that week of Daniel. He's not speaking it while the lamb is, beast is still in play. And we're still right now in the lamb beast era of time where actually Satan is influencing things. He's influencing America. And there was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. That's in the last half of the week of Daniel. That is not today. That is not in the past. That is in the future. In that week of Daniel. The 42 months are the last three and a half years. So his authority is right there. All right. And he opened his mouth to blaspheme against God and blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell on the earth, uh, heaven, sorry, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. When? In that week. And to overcome them. He don't overcome the bride. But he's only going to come those that's in the week of Daniel. And power is given to him over all kindred, nation, tongues, and nation, and tongues and nations. Now, when it says that, sometimes our mind goes to thinking, "Oh, he's got power over the whole world. He's only got power over the prophetic world. He will not have power over China, because at the end of the week, when Armageddon comes, he's not going to say, "Now, China, stay where you are. He has no power over them." So it, when it speaks about, yes, we can into, our mind can go to thinking, oh, it's the whole world he's got in control of. No, it's not. It's the, it's the biblical geographical area that he has in control in, which is his territory. All right. Now, we're going to go into that verse 11. I know I went on to the lamb beast last week, but I think in to bring in the whole picture together, we're still going to look at it this morning. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth that had two horns like a lamb, and he spake like a dragon. That there's only one dragon in the scripture. How many can see that? And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. The wound is completely healed when the week starts. It's in its healing process today, but it is not completely healed. All right. Now, when the scripture describes the he, it's not a man. Remember, we read in that first verse, it's that dragon is that he. But that he that is that dragon... 
He's not using Europe. In verse 11 or verse 12. He, that dragon, is using America. The Lambies. Now, that he, yes, well, some say, well, well it is a Lambies. Well, let's put it this way. Just like that Satan, that dragon over the Roman Empire, was the, was the spirit that influenced the political and the ecclesiastical side, that same dragon is influencing America. Now, influencing America to how long? Will America be or last? Which is the question today, isn't it? I mean, we're looking at for that beast to be set up. And we, the Bible tells us, well, Europe or the beast that's in Europe and the kings of the east are going to be the two major players. Well, if that came to the point of 70 weeks of Daniel, what would happen tomorrow? Not that it is. They'd have to get permission from America before doing something. Because America is the power to be dealt with. It influences, it tries to spread its influence over the whole world. And it does. As much as it is allowed to. Now it says, he, which is that dragon, exercised all the power of the first beast before him. In other words, he's having great authority. Like it was in the dark ages. Rome ruled the roost. And caused the earth and them that dwell on the earth to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. In other words, it's, if I'm reading this scripture right, America is going to last long enough till that beast Wound is completely healed. And at that point where it is going to be completely healed, what gives the Roman Empire or that papal office the authority it does? That lamb beast is going to be instrumental to bring it up to the climax that that fourth beast is going to come into power. It's all focused on Ezekiel 38 and 39. When the dust settles, America is not destroyed by God. It is Russia, Gog and Magog, and those other nations that are around about. That's to make the body attached to the head, to be the complete beast that Daniel saw. And that's at the beginning of the week that you have it in its full bloom Array. But now, on the religious note side, now I'm going to just say, is it okay to express what you feel that it might be? Now we have a lot of terrorists running around. They're not just terrorists on a military standpoint. But it's their religion that is causing these, these troubles. Not only with America, but you have also problems like that in India and Pakistan. There's certain troubles in other parts of the world and nations as well. And really what the world is seeing to the average unregenerated man. There are crazy fanatics and the world will be well done if they were taken off of the face of the earth. That's the sentiment right now. But with the miraculous war and the Ezekiel 38-39 war, the world will have been fed up with these extremists. And when they be developing this B system, they're not going to just develop the political side of it. Because remember, the head of it is that Pope. 
He'll get together with the World Council of Churches and says, Now, are you just sick and tired just like I am with those fanatics? And those people that call us devils? That don't believe in the Trinity? We're going to have to do something about it. And Papa will say, now that I've got authority, I will authorize you to have authority, World Council of Churches, to do what is need to be done to get rid of fanatics among your ranks. So that we don't have somewhere down the road some fanatic rising up and we're facing those problems again. Because remember, that week is all based on the world wants peace. It wants peace in a military sense, and it wants peace on a religious sense. Is this making sense? I hope so. So, in that 12th verse, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, who's going to worship that system? Let's think about it for a minute. Is this the whole world worship? Who's the worshipers? Are they going to bow down? Oh, my, my great system? No, they're not going to do that. Do you think the Chinese are going to say, my wonderful beast, we're going to bow that thing? They're not going to do that. But it'll be the people that's in that territory of that beast. They're going to be worshiping it. America will be caught up till that it will help set up that system. But once it is set up, Satan will drop America like a hot potato, and he'll sit in with that boy of his that will sit in Rome to be the head of it. That's when that dragon moves from the lamb beast now to the Roman beast. Well. Praise the Lord. So verse 11 and 12 is a summary of how the thing is going to come to a climax. But then when we reach verse 13 on down, it gives you details how it got there. And here's how it got there. And he does great wonders so that he can make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Not the beasts at this point in time. When is that happening? That's happening after World War II. Not now. Uh, so that's in this period of time here. But then, because why is it in that period of time? The head of the beast doesn't even exist yet here. We know it's being built up, but the European community has not come together from 45 to the 60, to early 60s. Now, please, if it is 59 or 62, or we're talking about something that's being gradually built up. So when he made those fire to come down, with those bombers and the nuclear bomb. That's that period of time. But now as we go into the next verse. And he deceived them on the earth by the means of those miracles, which is scientific miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now remember, he's not using Europe to do this. Is the land beast in the sight of the First beast. So the first beast has to exist. So now you're talking about after 63 on down to highlight the point of these scientific miracles. You have the Gulf War and that last war, which how they use those sophisticated military equipment, laser guided bombs, cruise missiles and such like. It's a miracle how those things work. And I even seen one yesterday. They're planning to put drones that can talk to each other that cover the whole battlefield. It'll be like a, 
uh, 20 or 30 of them, and they communicate to each other and see somebody and bingo. That's what they're developing now. So they're in the process of it. Who can make war? And Europe is attaining that, that technology, and so it is Israel. But this will be passed on to Europe when that week begins. So he's doing these scientific miracles in the sight of the beast, saying to them on the earth. Now, now watch. It's when he has that capability to do those things in the sight of the beast. It's after that that he says this, that they should make an image to the beast. Now, the World Council of Churches is an image in the making. But it will be its complete thing when the week begins because Rome will say, World Council of Churches. Now, remember, it is the image. The World Council of Churches is not the image of the territories of Europe. It's the image of the Catholic Church. That's why, thus far, even since 48, the Catholic Church has not joined the World Council of Churches. Satan knows what he's doing. He's not getting them to join altogether, because that would be just one image, wouldn't it? He couldn't be making an image of something else. He'd be part of that image. All right. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, the image of the beast, beast, when does it have that authority really to do? Now, the World Council of Churches, I know it's been said, it has been used in conflicts, influence conflicts, the people that have been killed and so forth. Well, that's true. But well, that's leading up to a climax where one day that World Council of Churches will have authority from the Catholic Church when that week of Daniel actually begins and he will cause those that would not worship the first beast so the first beast has to exist should be killed. And he caused, who's, who's causing it? And he shall cause both small, great, rich, rich, free, bond to receive a mark in their right hand and in their forehead. Now, the mark on the economic side, it could be your, a PIN number that you have to remember. It could be a permanent chip, not a Scotty chip. Okay, I thought it lightened things up. But on the religious aspect, they will be marked by what they believe. Are you Trinity? Because if you are not Trinity, you can't partake to this system. We're cutting you off. We're going to make sure that radical people, religious people, don't creep up again. Because we, the World Council of Churches, have just been empowered by Rome to do this now. But their authority will be in Europe, because the beast only has power to kill over one quarter part of the earth. Not here in North America. But once that beast system is set up, and that lamb has accomplished to help build that first beast, and it's on its way, and Satan changes his seat from the lamb beast now to the Roman beast, anywhere from that period of time, America will receive her full judgment. She will no longer be needed to prop up that first beast. So that George Washington vision, no doubt, will happen. It may be a series of things that God may be doing. God has been hinting warnings before judgment. Look at Katrina. Look at some of the things that are taking place in their weather. God is warning. 
The spiritual man, he may see the warning, but carnal man, he doesn't even have a clue. He doesn't understand why things are going wrong. Well, praise the Lord, I don't want to go on over time. So I'll just stop at this point in time. So, brothers and sisters, that Roman beast will give authority to the World Council of Churches. And when America receives her judgment, if there's any of those churches that belong to the World Council of Churches that are in America, that's going to be done away with. I can't help but feel when America receives her judgment, she'll start to realize, hey, that's that Antichrist system. And we in America don't want no WCC here in America. Because that will, they'll still be evangelical type Christians. They're well aware when Israel signs a covenant. I mean, they may not understand when and where, but they know it's plain for anyone don't need to have to be super spiritual to understand when Israel signs a covenant with the Antichrist, it's clear cut. So they have a decision to make. But America will wake up. She will suffer for what she's been doing. Been deceived by that dragon. But that dragon will be there in the week of Daniel. He'll be using that Roman beast, not the lamb beast. So praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We are moving to a time frame. Things can happen. God can speed up the clock, the, the clock work as he wish. It's not going to happen tomorrow, tomorrow morning. But when we see that miraculous war come to place, if you haven't been pulling up your bootstraps, you better then. Because time is real short. All right, let's just stand. Has a musician come in the meantime? Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this service here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for thy presence. Lord, use the words that you will see fit. For in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray this morning. Amen.
Brother Branham, I was looking to see what he had to say on it. He says, now this will be the final slaughter when Rome connects together with the World Council of Churches. This will form the image of the beast for that great final slaughter. So they're going to join together and Rome is going to give power to the RC, to the WCC. But I'm thankful that there's a rapture. Yeah. Amen. We are not meant to go through the tribulation, but in the rapture, praise the Lord. But as we get closer, the Lord will open up a little bit more and a little bit more. Because time will bring it about. Amen. Maybe one. Have a morning. Come up here and sing it. I'm, I'm, I'm about done in there. If you don't mind. It's like the military. You suggest something, then you're the one doing it. <laughs>
sky.